Hello, and welcome, all of you beautiful, darling, wonderful angel babies out there. This is the Dharma Junkie Podcast, and as always, I am your bearded, muscular host, Justin Otto. Now, on this episode of the Dharma Junkie Podcast, my guest is Andrea Mason. She is the creator and innovator of the life transformational journey called Play, which means plan life according to you. And who the fuck doesn't want to do that? Make your own schedule. I mean, you need a schedule. You need some sort of routine. Otherwise, you're just living in chaos. Let's be realistic. And nobody wants to live in chaos. And if you do, well, then I probably don't want to talk to you because you're going to be chaotic. And that's not something I want to deal with. So don't do that. Make a schedule. Clean up your room. Go to school. Wake up at the same time every day. Take vitamins. Go to the gym good for you all these things are good for you why aren't you doing it get up do something for the love of god do something anyway uh we had a pretty good talk and uh you just gonna have to listen to it so without further ado andrea mason you might catch yourself sliding in and out of you might catch yourself sliding in and out of all the hallucinatory do just relax and enjoy just relax and enjoy it this is an experiment this is an experiment in mind formation in formation, in formation. Forming, forming, controlling, controlling, operating your, operating mind, your and mind and your brain. We're using digital, We're using techniques, digital techniques to overload, to overload and scramble, and scramble, confuse, confuse, unfocus, unfocus your, mind, your mind. The natural state of the brain is chaos. Chaos, Chaos is beautiful. Is beautiful. I love your backdrop. <laughs> it you. is so cool. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it's it's been a it's been a hectic day. I, I did a podcast last night. Um and apparently at some point Zoom had updated. Um and I didn't realize that it had updated. And when it updated, not this recent update, not the one that we both just had to do, but apparently it had updated. So at some point over the past, say, eight months, and I didn't realize that it had updated because I had taken a break from the podcast for a while. Okay. And so, like, I went to record and, I, you know, we went and did the interview and everything went well. And it was a really good interview. And then I went back to uh, to work on it. And it, mm. generally Zoom saves into two files and the settings had changed and it only saved into one and it was on the wrong microphone. It was recording through my webcam rather than my actual microphone and the oh audio, audio quality was terrible and it's completely unusable. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know, this technology thing is a blessing or a tragedy. It's ridiculous. You can't always depend on it and you need backups to your backups to your backups. It's ridiculous. Well, you know, it's... I. It's my fault for not checking beforehand, but you know, when you've, right. when you've used the same platform, you know, 50 plus times to do these things, right, right. Then you yeah. almost kind of assume that it's like, oh, I can just go hit the record button and everything will be fine. And, and, and I mean, it, right. it is my fault for not really looking into it and making sure Are you that are if, allowed to be upset. It's okay. Allow your yeah, emotions sure. vent. It's all cool. We're real, you know, we're people take a breath. No, no harm, no foul. You know, it's all good. I experienced a whole range of emotions over that. There was definitely... <laughs> There's definitely <laughs> sadness. There was a lot of anger. There's anger yes. in the mind. I was definitely, uh, Justin was angry. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I could observe myself <laughs> being that way. And I was like, I uh, I ended up leaving after that. I was like, I'm not even going to stay at my house. And I went and stayed with my girlfriend last night. And yeah, I, yeah. just on the drive over there, like, I, I like my mood changed completely, you know, like I kind of, yeah, yeah. I, I just didn't listen to any music or anything in the car. It was just silence. And it was just kind of a meditative practice just to drive over there. It's about a 40 minute drive. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, no, definitely. Uh, yeah, it gave me the opportunity to just kind of work through all that stuff. But yeah, I was I was definitely not in the greatest <laughs> mood after that. I was like, oh my God. So yeah. I had to, are I had you to, okay for today? Are oh, you yeah, okay? They, Do you want to yeah. okay? No, I'm good. <laughs> make sure. okay, okay. Although I, I did just uh realize that I think I threw away something that I had just bought the other day and it was like it wasn't a whole lot of money. When it rains, it pours, you know, oh, it's just man, like, like you have to the mindset I've is got, a powerful thing. It's yeah, crazy. I've, I've, I think I'm just trying to take on too much. I think I'm just trying to do too much and uh, preach into the choir, my friend. Preach uh, yeah. into the choir. 
I need, <laughs> need to practice, you know, practice what I preach and just slow down. Exactly. <laughs> I say that all the time. I say that all the time. It's funny, but it's it's all good. It's all good. We're here. We're healthy. Yeah, one hundred percent. So good. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I went. I figured, all right, you know what? Today was a crazy day. The carpet got taken under our feet for our family this weekend and we got called into work. So I was like, you know what? I need to go to nature. I need to just unplug. Like I'm unplugged, but I need to get away from like you, the studio and everything. Right. So I went with our son um, to like this uh, trail and I was like so excited. I was like, okay, because I do daily videos. I was like, okay, I props i got my equipment hmm. and i had everything vision in my mind and then we got two thirds to the way there and because of the hurricane it was like barricaded you couldn't go any further i was like i was like come on man it's like a perfect day but because of the wellness of the water was just so high i we would have had to have like you know swamp boots to wear to walk through to get to the other side because oh. it was a dip and then it was a rise so but it was all good i got to nature i got at least an hour outside you know just kind of chilling and relaxing and you know it, you know it, life throws you curveballs and it's just how you deal with it you know it's quite literally in that scenario when it rains it pours <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and not to say i got i felt the wrath from my family a few days prior on wednesday because um a friend of mine's father had passed and i was going to pay respects now again i'm unplugged so i was just like okay husband's not home i'll take a ride out it shouldn't be too bad mm. yeah well that's when the hurricane hit and i was literally after the services driving through an actual hurricane on the way home and I, my phone was just blowing up thank goodness my husband my my son was asleep in the back but it was like white knuckle driving the whole way and i'm just like i don't think this was a good idea <laughs> nonetheless that i didn't pay attention to the timing because the timing if i followed it was six to eight i thought it was eight to ten and so i was in the bowels and guts of the storm where I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a petite stature and I'm trying to <laughs> take my son to go to the services and we're like literally like flying this way. I was like, this is not, this is not good. So, where, so where what would have took about, what, 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 what would have originally took about 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes to get home. If that ended up taking two hours. So you yeah. can only imagine my family going crazy, watching the news and like, She's out there in a storm driving with, you know, I was just like, I get it. I get it. It was a mad mistake. I'm home. I'm safe. It's all good. <laughs> so are you in the, uh, the, North the metropolitan area, right? Yeah. So we were, but we're right on the outskirts of the city. Hmm. So where we were, we live on a mountain, but where I had to travel was towards the city. So you had to go like leaps and bounds to get there. Right. So yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was an adventure to say the least. Yeah, for sure. I'm on, I'm on the uh, the Gulf Coast, so okay. So we yeah, get, you could you guys get hit or no? Uh, I mean, we got some of the outer bands. I'm in Pensacola, Florida. You know, so okay. I'm, I'm about yeah, my friends just moved to oh, just went out of my head. Clearwater. That's okay. where they live. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, so, a, that's, it's a that's beautiful a, down there. Well, that's a bit further south from me. I'm I'm okay. Where I'm like right next to uh, Mobile, Alabama. So I'm like oh, okay. Right in the Panhandle of Florida. So nice. we every time that a hurricane comes in and tracks upward, we get mm -hmm. we get pummeled. Get slammed. I mean, yeah. like I said, we caught some of the outer bands this time. Uh, and, okay, I mean, we got a lot That's of rain great. for sure and a lot of wind. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't anything like hurricane strength. You know, it was more just tropical right. storm. But gotcha. yeah, you know, we just got Sally last year, and, and it, yeah, it's you know, so crazy. We, we get a lot of a lot of big storms here. So yeah, the hurricanes are like one thing I'm I'm really used to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that that's <laughs> I don't not, know. You know, not a lot of people say that. Not a lot of people could say that. If you've mm -hmm. lived on the Gulf Coast for any amount of time, then you could definitely say it. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. And I've been, I grew up here, and I, you know, I was raised on the Gulf, so like I kind of grew up nice. with the storms, and it was like yeah. So you're like it's life. secondary to you. Yeah, yeah it's just, like oh, it's here comes the storm again. Yeah, up, <laughs> you know? again, here we go. It's you know yeah down and stock up on water and et cetera. right right yeah. Anyway, so tell me. Tell me about a little bit about what you do. 
Yes, so I am the innovator of a life transformation journey called Press Play. And what I mean by that is plan life according to you. So I'm an accountability coach where I bridge the gap of where people have been or are stuck to where they need to be. I don't dictate, I don't lecture, I just talk to them and listen and communicate and learn and we come up with what their strategies and goals are and I walk right beside them each time. So I kind of like, the analogy I use is just kind of like holding the seat of a person learning how to ride a bike, make sure that they stay on the path and if they fall, I'm right there with them. Right on. And the reason why I chose that is because I just felt when the lockdown came about, I just felt like I could do more, I could be more than what was expected of me or what I've been doing for two decades in the mental health, social work and psychology fields. Mm. And I've exceeded and pay, paid my dues in those industries. And I just kind of took everything that I've studied, everything that I've learned, and then I've adapted it and modified it customary to me on how I can help individuals on a more personal level, you know, what do they really want to do? What do you want to do in your life? Nobody asks you how you are doing rather than to hear themselves being courteous and waiting for so they can reply. Hey, you know, it's 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 more of a selfless kind of conversation where where do you see yourself? What is something if you had the best vision of what your life would look like? What is it? Right. And then we work on the steps on to getting that happen. Right. Yeah. I'm sure those, the steps probably look a lot different for every individual because everything is Absolutely. Quite, quite subjective. Yeah. And, and that's what I've learned too. That's why I felt that I had to create something innovative because, you know, the cookie cutter lifestyle is just not working anymore. It's outdated by so many years now. It's beyond. And in today's name, you know, today's game, you know, if we just have that person willing to listen, have that person willing to kind of, you know, at least have an idea of your vision, then I have a better idea of how I can get you there. Right. Yeah, it makes you know? sense. Now, yeah. now I, I, like I said, I'm sure it's very subjective client to client, obviously, but is there yeah. anything that, is there anything that's homogenous to the clients? Is there anything that like across the board is something you recommend to people when they're trying to, you know, figure yes. out where they want to be. Okay. Yes. Everybody sees one path, nine to five, 10 to six, eight to four to fully financially contribute to their family, their lifestyle, their home. Right. And I say, it doesn't have to be that way. And then a lot of them are stuck. You know what? When I was a kid, I wanted to do this, but because I have a family, because I have a mortgage, because I have a car payment, what have you, I have to do this grind. And they think all the time that they, 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 it's kind of like a double-edged sword. They think they have so much time when they really don't. Right. And then when you look at how you're utilizing your time, that's what's important. And I do only one and only exercise on the first initial session where I work with them and then I give them an assignment mm. and they do that assignment and they just step back and be like, what have I been doing, man? Like, what have I been? Wow, I didn't realize that, you know. And I have been able with, you know, my experience, time management, prioritization, you know, professional organizing and understanding in the small business realms, not everything is as complex as it needs to be. It's just keep it simple. You right. know, and the simple, basic fundamentals will pour the foundation. And once you've got that, the next is fun. It's imaginative. If it's creative, it's innovative. You can make whatever you want, you know. And when I first started, it was kind of like, you know, I was so used to, we are so programmed. I was so used to saying, well, I don't know if I can do this or maybe I can do this. And then you kind of have to... Andrea, <laughs> it's your business. You can do whatever you want. You know, the basic fundamentals is what you have to do right. to stay, you know, uh, alert. But you can create it and, and, you know, twist it any kind of way that works customary to the individual. And that's what I do. Right. Because all the time we want to put individuals 
in these boxes or these compartments, these labels, perhaps you, there are areas of strength, there are areas of weakness. And it's like, no, man, that's not how it is. I'm not like, like, just as I'm like you, I'm not like you. If you would, I'm, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like we all have a story and some of us have novels of maybe three or five chapters of sadness, anxiety, and then like a chapter of a win, a chapter of a loss but it's how we experience it and the experiences that we have that we can pay forward to help other people in that position and that's what instilled me you know i was raised in the war-torn drug zone era at its prime of columbia south america during the cartel oh wow wow. and my parents were unable to care for me so they sent me to the promised land and i arrived in america at 11 months old, you know, 11 pounds, that's a pound per month, barely (laughs) making it. And I was blessed because I was welcomed with open arms and unconditional love of wealthy and healthy parents. And I still remember to this day as that resounds in my ear, Andrea, no matter what you do, do what you love, act with integrity and do it right. And that is the key to success. And sure, when you're young, you know, my parents were gracious enough to let me know, hey, you're adopted. And for a a young child, that's like a mixed message, a a treasure, but a tragedy. Like the treasure in the mindset of a young child, oh, I'm, I'm a gift to your family for whatever reasons. Thank you so much for helping me. And I looked on the, you know, the TV and you, you know, at that time when I was was plugged in and I was seeing myself in those underdeveloped countries. Like I almost didn't make it. Right. But then as you, you know, when you're young, your story is told to you. And as you grow up, you begin to write your own story. So as I was growing up and evolving and maturing, mm-hmm. it really sunk in. Wait a minute. If my parents didn't even want me. How am I going to be an individual to love others? How is anybody going to else love me? Right. And when that mindset shifted, that allowed me to be a victim of abuse of all kind, neglect, abandonment. And during my he- elementary high school years, I was, you know, bullied. I didn't fit in. You know, I shoved into trash cans, shoved into lockers because of my differences. Right. And I was misunderstood. And then when I said, you know what, I need closure. So I asked my parents and we were only able to salvage a few records of Mm. what was left of of that time. And the only legal document I still remember was that my parents were not able to reclaim me. And the disclaimer was that if they were unable to care for themselves, let alone write their own name, whether that be physical impediments neurological impediments, academic, I don't know. Right. So I came to like, really, my awareness of a blank slate, no identity. But I was able to mold my identity through my experiences, you know. Right. And so I was like, all right, you come to like junior high school and high school, what do you want to do? And I was like, you know what, I just want to understand cultural diversity, I want to understand socioeconomic status. How can I do that best in working different realms? I entered social work, but I also wanted the other side of the spectrum where I wanted to to understand the science behind it. So I I took up psychology and both those those degrees allowed me to work in the industries of social work and psychology from infantry to geriatric, to working on the community for those on the streets to those in the in, in incarceration with such heinous crimes. Right. And as I was evolving my career, I was living through my heart. And that's one of the quotes that I've that I've taglined is follow your heart and not the herd. For yeah. the herd will get you hurt. And that could be, you know, either way, herd of the masses mm-hmm. and choosing and being courageous mm-hmm. enough to choose the path less traveled or heard of what what other people tell you you should and shouldn't do or how their perspective is. And when I did that, I kind of just took all the gifts and kind of wrapped it in a gift. And when I 
excelled and had the opportunity during the lockdown when I was like, now what? My employer closed their doors. It was unable to sustain itself. And I just said, all right, I can either ride this or I can rise from this. And 2020 for me was a year of clarity. And I just decided to grind, pedal to the metal and start this. And I was able to get and work with the Mr. Les Brown, the motivational speaker, and just kind of find my way. And it was through him being authentic, being real, remembering where he was to get him where he is. And that's what I value in individuals. If you can say, hey, you know what? I'm, yeah, I'm at the top, but it, that didn't happen overnight. Yeah. I had to blood, sweat, and tears, oh, yeah. patience, you know, grind, sacrifices, cut people off, sharpen and, and close the, the vision to really focus. Mm. And, and that's what a lot of people may or may not be ready to do. Because a lot of people quit on the one yard line, you know? Yeah. And it's like, you either make it or you don't. And what? I just constantly did. Yeah. That, well, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad you did. Because that's something that a lot of people don't ever even try to do. And, you know, I think that's because people want security, you know, and there's a lot mm. of, there's a lot of risk involved, you know, there's, yes. I, I don't know if you're familiar with Jordan Peterson, but he talks about that yes. a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of risk involved with following mm. your dreams, but there's also more risk involved with staying in a job that you hate because yes. you, know, you you, if you stay at the, if you stay at a job that you're not happy with, you, in five years you're gonna gonna have aged ten years. You know, it's it's gonna just beat the soul out of you. And it's funny you mentioned that, Justin, because that's what happened to me in 2015. It was after my mother had passed, and I'm like, really, again, now you've taken another one, like, like, and this was when I was, you know, ready to 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 family plan, and I was just like. I can't, you know what, forget it. I'm just going to zone out. I'm just going to grind, be a workaholic, forget my emotions. I'm just going to do me. And it wasn't with the right intention as doing you is what I'm doing now. Right. And so when you stay at a position, stay comfortable, settle, it is what it is, is my biggest pet peeve phrase. And you stay there. That's what I did. And it was just mustering and festering and festering. And, and what happened was I ended up getting conditions. And it was osteoporinia, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, you know, uh, gallbladder with ulcers on it, appendectomy, upper respiratory, fibromyalgia, carpal tunnel syndrome. And you start looking at this and you're not treating it. You're like, no, I'm just going to focus. I have to contribute to my family. I have to work. That's what they said. I have to work. Right. And then I remember waking up, getting ready to go to school and, and work because I was a workaholic. And I was just like, I remember going and I didn't feel right. Got to the office and I just have, was having difficulty breathing. So they took me to the hospital. Everything was fine. Sent me home. I got a call later that night and they said we missed an oversight one of the tests and it says you have myasthenia gravis, which is a term, no, a terminal Graves autoimmune disease. Okay. And I came back to the hospital and as soon as the doctor kind of showed me and explained it in further detail medically and in my, my understanding, next thing I know, Justin, I woke up on the ICU unit hooked up to machines, lost all four okay. quadrants of my, my whole body shut down. I couldn't eat on my own. All four quadrants were numb. And I ended up staying in the hospital for a week, not seeing my family, let alone our son. And I remember talking to my husband on the phone and I was just like, he's like, we need you home. This is not good. This is too long. We want you to be healthy. We don't know how this happened. And I remember, spoiler alert, I remember, because we unplugged from everything in 2000, probably 15 or so around that time. Mm -hmm. And I remember watching The Secret. And there's a segment in there about the medical area of your life. Mm -hmm. So 
So I, we had the conversation. I remembered how, what had happened. So the next day, the team treatment team says, you know, Andrea, I don't know what's going on, but we're running millions of these tests. Nothing's improving. And if we're going to do one more test, but if you are unable to eat on your own will and walk on your own will, your stay is going to be until further notice. Right. And I said, all right. Team came in, I had my test, they, I draped my feet over the hospital bed and jumped down. It's, and I was able to walk to the nurse's station and back, have a full breakfast, a full lunch, and get discharged in the arms of my family that afternoon. That's amazing. Clean bill of health since that, since that day. Wow. So it is, are you committing what they say? I think it was Mr. Les Brown, you know, spiritual suicide. By staying in a job because you hate it, because you're just exacerbating robotic mode of something you don't like. Yeah. And Jim Carrey had this, said this in his speech, and he said, you know, I learned many great things of my father, and he learned, and I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit, that, I, you know, if you're going to spend time in something that you don't like, why not spend that time in something you do like? Right. Because passion promotes influence, impact, and it eventually will turn into income. Because you're not even working, you're not even working, you're working from your heart. And that's why I say follow your heart and not your not the herd. And not the herd. Don't feel guilty if you want to do pursue your dream. Right. And this is what I tell a lot of like, young kids and parents. Parents, mentors, coaches. We are the first teachers in our child's eyes. And please don't make the mistake by having your child live your dreams. Right, yeah. Or, Allow or, them to not, live their dreams. Or Create not even, a vision. Not even your dreams, just, you know, it, it's so important to, and people tell their children all the time, you know, you can be whatever you want to be, but they don't mean it. You know, when they're telling right. them that, they don't mean exactly. it. But like to say it to them and actually mean it, because you can, right. you know, you've just yeah. got to, it's like anything else. You've got to put the work in. And, uh, you know, yes. the, like I said, the interview that <laughs> did not work out last night that I'm going to have to <laughs> do, but we were talking about that, just, you know, manifestation and, yeah. but it's not people, people misunderstand manifestation. You know, they, right, they, right. they just, you know, make a vision board and, and, and men, you know, mentalize it and put it out in the universe. And then it's going to all come to them. It's like, no, man, you got to do the work. It's a and, whole process. It's a, yeah, you got to do like boots on the ground work. Like it's, yeah. not, if you want the thing, if you want to get the things you want, you're going to have to work for it, but why work? And why, do why, things you're not, we're used to doing. Right. But why, why not work for the things that you want rather than work for the things that you think you exactly. need and don't want? You know? And that's the thing, you know, we are always focused in life. I should have, could have, would have, must. What do you want? Right. How can you get there? You know, an analogy that I, I, I said, you know, our son, like I mentioned, is young. And he wants to be a chef. And I took it upon myself and I consulted my husband. I said, you know what? I have two individual gentlemen that have graduated from Johnson and Wales Culinary Institute and run their own restaurants. That's awesome. And what I did, we brought him to the restaurant and he did about five or seven hours in with the sous chefs and chefs and did that for some time. Mm -hmm. And he loves it. Why not? He's, he's not even in middle school yet, but he's got the hands on experience. Right. And that's what I say is so important. If we, instill in our future generation that's who's going to be taking care of us that's who's going to be taking care of the world and if we allow them to have a vision and say this is what i want to be go to the next level allow yourself to do the research what does it take to do that and then after doing that and it's an investment not only is it an investment in your parents for college or high school but it's an investment for you thereafter absolutely time money experience mental health physical health and then after doing that allow yourself to do an internship or an apprenticeship see what the good bad and ugly of the day requires of that right and then apply what you've learned and go for it and i think a lot of people are so fearful for doing that you know just enduring my experience 
I was never, never fearful of failing. I mean, look at my life. I've, I've failed a million times. Right. That's part of my story. I fail a million times a day. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. And it's the and what I feared, to be honest, is fear of success. Because I, yeah. am I going to be abundant enough? Am I going to be relatable? Am I going to, you know, be able to help the individual, but I have to understand and be patient and meet them where they're at? You know? Yeah. Do you, do you find that you've been a, a victim of self-sabotage because of that fear of success? Oh, absolutely. A, mi- a million times. I used to, you know, it, it started when I was younger. You know, if I had a relationship and I felt like maybe something would happen, I would end it before they did. If I had a job and it was going too well, I was like, uh, and I was looking maybe on the verge of a raise, I would look for a backup job just in case. And this is what I mean before giving up on the one yard line, not having that self-confidence, not believing in yourself because, you know, especially in today's world, we're media bound. We're in a two dimensional world. Mm. You could have a 99 thumbs up, 99 shares, 99 posts and 99 praise, cheers, the whole kit and caboodle. You get that one dislike, your media focus goes on there. (laughs) And that's like, why would we want, you know, if you're courageous is enough, I've done it, go holds, no holds bars and approach that individual in a civil, respectful manner and said, what well, draw you to that conclusion? So what how, allowed you to do that? You how know? did you, how did you overcome that mindset, that, that fear mindset and that uh, self-sabotage well, and victim mindset <laughs> that you said you had yeah. when you were younger? How did, how did you overcome that? Like what was, when did you start working on that and, and how did you get through that? Cause I mean, that's something that I still struggle with and I, it's something I think everybody struggles with until they overcome it. So how did you yes. start working on changing that mindset? You know, it was literally back to that hospitalization in that bed because when I started really thinking of stuff and I was like, wait a minute, what was going in my mind when this happened? What was going in my, and I was able to track all of my conditions because I wasn't taking care of me. I was either being a victim of, you know, people pleasing. I was a victim of enabling. I was a victim of not feeling good enough. And I was just like, this mind became matter and it became relevant and it became so clear. And I was just like, well, I really can't say that it's, I I could say it's pretty self-induced, but I have no medical records. So I don't know if any of this was hereditary, you know what I mean? But if you think about it, all of these are autoimmune disease conditions. And I'm very particular with my words. So what what I did was I sat down and this is gonna be the hardest thing because I still do it and it's hard for me, just either be in the mirror or being, like you said, in complete silence and just just self-talk. What is going on with you? Andrea, why why are you upset right now? Sometimes it takes three seconds if you, if if it's an incident right then and there, am I, and and it takes three seconds to say, am I going to react or am I going to respond? But that's a lot of growth of getting punched and knocked down a million times. Yeah. Because I'm like, what, man, and, and, and what was cool about it is I was able to realize and recognize the triggers and pet peeves that I didn't like of others. Mm. And then when I saw myself doing that, right. yeah, I was you don't, just like, well, that's, that's, well, then I'm a hypocrite now, you know, well, yeah. like if I don't, I mean, not, what am I doing about it? You know, I mean, you only really see the faults in others that you have in yourself. And that's why the exactly. things that bother you about other people or things about yourself that you don't, in my experience anyway. Yeah, um, no, you're absolutely do you, right. Do you, and uh, that's, are you, are you familiar with the uh, Vipassana meditation? Pardon me? Are you familiar with uh, what's uh, called Vipassana meditation? It's a uh, insight, no. it's insight meditation. Uh, really, okay. the, that's the the point, uh, as to my understanding, anyway. That's like the entire point of meditation. A lot of people have this uh, misnomer about meditation and feel that it's, you know, like where you just sit and you're, 
you know, eyes closed and blissed out and just completely right. detached from your thoughts. And, and with Vipassana meditation, which like I said, is insight meditation. The whole point is what we were just talking about. It's taking that time, that silence or, yeah. or, or whatever, you know, uh, there's many meditative practices, but it's taking the time to do, to really just look at your, your thoughts and yeah. you know, to, to analyze your thoughts and yourself. And that, that's when you get into those philosophical, well, why are you doing that? You know, yeah. how, why are you acting that way? Why, why, you know, and it's and how, so powerful. Yeah. And it's so powerful because I'd be sitting there quiet and all of a sudden it would be like different levels of emotion. I would be sitting there and all of a sudden I'd experience crying. And then I'd be sitting there and then I'd get frustrated. And I'd be sitting in there kind of like, you know, emotional, like I want to hug or something. And then I would be like, no, that's it. Enough is enough. You know what I'm saying? I need to change this because nobody else is going to change it. And that's what allowed me also to focus on achieving personal freedom through the healing power of forgiveness because everybody has somebody, everybody's name is somewhere in someone's mind on a therapeutic couch. Whether they get to that couch or not, but that's what it is. Right. And unless we face our, our past, our past will continue to chase us. And a lot of the blockages are from forgiveness. And here, I'll give you an example. Okay. You have an exa- a, a, a altercation with a family member or a friend, mm-hmm. and that person has done you wrong. And they didn't think they did anything wrong, or you at least feel like you're not going to apologize. I already explained to you that that was harmful or disrespectful or hurtful, and you're not going to apologize. And so what we do is we have this misconception that asking for forgiveness for someone or forgiving someone is letting our guard down that it's okay, justifying that what they did was all right. Maybe I permitted it. Maybe I was... Maybe I deserved it, but if I say, if I forgive them, then that puts them in the right. And it's very pride stricken when the complete opposite is we are the only individuals and species on this planet that have repetitive, repetitive behaviors that we don't allow ourselves to forgive because in the end, we must most importantly forgive ourselves. Because right. we're bringing on that baggage time and time again. And to kind of give you that example is if a friend or family did you wrong, you don't forgive that person. You try to case, you have your wits about them. You keep them at bay or what have you. They're toxic to you. Truth be told, down the road, whether it be an interview, a job opportunity, somebody opening the door of, of a relationship you're about to engage in, and that person has a slight trait of that person you didn't forgive, mm-hmm. they're the bystander. They're the innocent target that you either lash out or remove from your your life because of that individual. Right. And what really drew me to that, that struck a chord and home to me was when I was doing the liaison into the institutions of longevity hosp- mental health hospitalizations or incarcerations you know, with due respect and confidentiality and HIPAA, I would go into these cells and meet these individuals who have performed heinous crimes, Mm. heinous crimes. And I would eliminate and disregard their paperwork and talk to them eye to eye as an individual. And I've learned so much more and I've gotten a lot of respect doing that because nine times out of 10, that's all they knew. That's what was done to them. That's what they thought was right. Lack of limited education and knowledge. They weren't given other options. They were just told to, or that's what was was done to them that they should do to others. And I remember coming back and sharing that with my family and friends, and they were just like, well, they're monsters. I said, don't even. A lot of them didn't know what they were doing. And if they did know what they're doing, they thought it was right. Right. You know, every single second of our life, we have a choice to go right or left. And it is our choice to do the right thing and act with integrity. But a lot of people don't do that, unfortunately. Unfortunately not. Yeah. 
you know, and uh, it's yeah, yeah, you know, and it's so it's so it's so important to have that self awareness. Yes, you know, absolutely. Uh, because every action is like, uh, you know, it's like dropping a pebble into a still bucket of water, you know, or a yes. still pond. Has it, a rippling it, effect. It, that ripple effect, and it, it doesn't stop until it reaches the the next shore. You know, it's just gonna keep yeah. going and going and going. And, uh, yeah. It's and like, that was a that was a hard journey for me because, you know, I, I have a good friend of mine, and this this gentleman has faced over adversity of the most horrible condition, and he was given his time date of timeline of when he wasn't going to be here. And, you know, he was able to be a warrior of adversity. And, you know, I, to this day, he still in, in, empowers me. Andrea, impossible is a word. But look, it's what's before possible. I'm possible. And we, we encourage each other. And, and, and he, you know, he is a good friend of mine. Nelson Beltetrar, the positive drip dot com. I mean, when you are given and told you're not going to be here on a certain date, yeah, and then you look, you, you look death in the eye, like, not now. I got stuff to do. Yeah, you know, and that that that's what allows me and reminds me, you know, somebody always has a different challenge. We're all faced with challenges, but how we learn from it, how we grow from it. Mr. Les Brown says, are you going through it or are you growing through it? That's good. And, and that's, I love that statement that really resonated with me because I was always like, you know, misery loves company, but it's like, you, you know, you ask yourself now, like Tony Robbins says, well, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> you know, you know, what are you going to do about it? Right. And it's right. It sounds like tough love. It sounds like, well, you don't care, but... If you really think about it, I mean, if you sit there, what are you doing? Just, yeah, if you don't do anything about it, you allow yourself to become a victim. You know, exactly. Whether, whether you're a victim of circumstance or anything else, and, right? You know, I, at one point, I, I just stopped allowing myself to become a victim. And, yeah. In in most aspects, I'm still, definitely still. Playing I mean, the, we're human, victim, and that's what we have to role do. In other aspects, you know, <laughs> like sure. Oops. But you know, yeah. and it's weird. But you we're know. human. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's the human condition. And, and and it's just so painful, so painful how hard and critical we are of ourselves. Oh yeah. I'm I'm the it's most it's just most, like most, I'm if the most I critical. ever <laughs> Yeah, if I ever saw how I think about myself or treated myself during in the beginning, I was just like, That's horrible. You yeah. know, I wouldn't want anybody to treat me that way, nor would I treat anybody else that way. Yeah, that's so we we are a reflection and we emulate and give off the perspective of who we are, you know, and at times with forgiveness, it's not a reflection of you. It's a reflection of them. They're they're soundboarding or outlashing on you for something that's going on that they haven't let go or faced. Right still harboring some sort of resentment yeah. yeah well you know it's like they say uh you know first of all forgiveness isn't for the other person it's for you you know exactly and exactly. then and then that links directly to the other uh classically used phrase is that resentment holding resentment is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die yes you know? and, absolutely and i think about absolutely. that a lot um yeah yeah you know, and that's why i'm very you know a lot of people kind of you know, I get a lot of lash about, well, how are you unplugged? Don't you know what's going on in the world? I said, believe you, me. <laughs> Somebody's going to tell me something involuntary or voluntarily if they really care. And if they even didn't care about me, I'm gonna it's just that. another misery loves company that I'll hear. It. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Although they could have done that on Wednesday when I was driving through the hurricane, but <laughs> we won't go there. You know what I mean? I could have used it then. But at the same token, it's like, you know, you just have to be mindful because your thoughts can be weapons, you know, trophies or tragedies, wisdom or weapons. And I'm very careful. And, you know, I don't say a lot of diseases mm -hmm. verbally. I don't watch commercials if I'm, you know, doing, you know, surfing through the net for research or material or anything. I'm very particular what comes out of my mouth, the tonality, the body language, 
because it's a it's a reflection and and it emulates who I am. Yeah. You know, not that I worry about what other people think, but I want to be myself and I want to make sure that I'm doing what I need to do. You know, right. yeah. you know, it's interesting. You said you, you because you're uh, the fact that you're unplugged, you you didn't know really know about the hurricane and you ended up getting caught in it. I uh, I was like I said, I'm in Pensacola uh, in the upper you know part of Florida in the panhandle. And I was right. just in uh, Tampa last weekend and we drove back on Saturday uh-huh. and right. the storm hit. Saturday or Sunday morning, like mm-hmm. literally like right after we got back and we had no, wow. no idea that it was even good. Oops. So same thing yeah. like, because I am, you know, I, I choose to not, you know, it's just, I can control what I put in here because what I, what I put in key. here is directly going to affect everything else in my life, you know? Yes. And that's the secret. You know, I've understood that now I'm, over everything that's happened. I'm an, I'm an empath. I've learned that I'm an extrovert. I learned that I'm very in tune and connected with people and individuals around the world. So for me to absorb what's going on truly will take a toll on me on all levels. Absolutely. And it's not and I'm not justifying this, but it's not because I want to be arrogant or ignorant or not support or be aware. But in my line of work, in order for me to empower and keep that motivation and that, you know, optimism and reality to it, reality to it, mm-hmm. I need to, again, like you had mentioned, control what comes in my headspace, control what comes out of my mouth even what I listen to on all realms, my environment, the individuals I surround myself with, you know, and that that's really key and that's really important. Well, you know, they say that the mind has a tendency to incline itself to what you surrounded with. So you know, if you're, if you're constantly berating yourself with, you know, negative media, negative people, mm-hmm. negative situations, yeah. you're going to, it's, it's eventually going to make you negative. And, and that's what consumed me. Right. Yeah. I think that's what consumes a lot of people. Yeah. And, and I was just like, I, I felt helpless. I'm trying to enable them, trying to make the see the light. Misery loves company. Oh, well, it's not going to work. Okay. Well, did you try it? No. Okay. So then I feel at that time, this was going on back then. It's my fault. Right. So I internalized that they were negative. I internalized that the world was crazy. I internalized that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, there has to be some sort of boundary and understanding like, okay, this is what's going on in the world. What are my opportunities, availability and accessibility to contribute, to help, to support, to prevent what have you, but do what I need to do as well. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. I mean, how did because that's something I still struggle with, even being cognizant of what, what we're talking about and knowing that, you know, that the negative things can, and, and you know, just like you're saying, it's like a snowball effect. You're talking to somebody mm-hmm. and then and, and they're negative, you know, they have a, you know, say that, um, you know, something happened and then you feel responsible. And even though you're not responsible, you know, it could be something that was completely out of your control, but because of that, you know, the, like we're saying, the human condition and just the way that the mind is programmed and the way that growing up in this culture, we're taught, basically taught to feel that way. Like, oh, it's yes. my fault. And, and I will bear. There has the to be some sort of fault somewhere. There, Yeah. There's you know? somebody has to be at fault, you know, right. nothing can, reality things not. aren't, you know, it can't just be that, oh, something fucked up and it, you know, right. somebody's got to be at fault. And, and I still have the problem of normally putting that on myself, like, well, it's my fault. And, and then I go into that w- weird fucking mind space where it's, uh, it's because I'm a shitty person. And I start telling myself these fucking things that I know it's not and true. I know it's not true. And I can see myself saying it to myself. And I'm like, right. deep, deep down, I know it's not true. And, and it's I'm just wrapped up in the emotion. And I'm just, happens. I'm just feeding my, you know, feeding it and feeding it and getting that feedback loop of, you know, mm-hmm that and that becoming the narrative you know like when i know right. that's not the case but you know we get so wrapped up i think i think we were talking about this earlier we get wrapped up in the story that yeah. you know this is what you have to do and you have to produce and you have to work nine to five and like there's a set way yeah. to do things and that's just not the fucking case there's so many no. other ways to approach life yeah but, 
but it's so, so easy, you- it's so easy to get wrapped up. And I think there has to be a lot of deprogramming and deconditioning because oh, we absolutely. are so deeply programmed and so deeply conditioned to feel this way about ourselves and to feel this way about society and just to feel this way about life in general. Yeah. And if we just focused, what is it that we want in life truly? Mm -hmm. And are we willing to do whatever it takes? Forget the how, forget the finances, forget all that. Just have a vision and are we willing to do whatever it takes? Right. And that's what I did. I said, okay, what do I, I have this experience. I have this knowledge and I have this voice and message I want to share with everyone. Right. I never done public speaking. I was never in the public eye before October 2020. Right. And then people would say, "Well, how are you how are you Man, you're not established. You never right. have owned a business before. You never spoke you on platforms somewhere, right? before." And so that what I did is and and I I, I kind of joke, but it's kind of true. Tell me I can't do something. Now I'm going to show you I can. Right. And that's that that fight or flight, that warrior inside of us that says, all right, you're going to doubt me. But see, that's what I do, but in a positive way. Right. I'm an accountability coach. Okay, Justin, what do you want to do? Well, Andrea, in about a month, I want to lose X amount of pounds. And in about two years, I want to do this. And I even have individuals that don't even know. Right. Don't even know. Yeah. have no clue because nobody ever asked them that yeah. question. Yeah. 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 It's really easy to get caught up with that. You know, yeah. Yeah. But if it was, e- you know, I mean, this everybody, was the, yeah, this was the pivotal point. If it was easy, everybody doing, but think about this. Nowadays, everything is on the internet. Mm. There's books, libraries are still punching out books, audio books. And I never understood this until I, be, I, I really delved deep into what I'm doing. Mm. And it was, nobody's going to come knocking at your door asking you, hey, hey, Justin, I want to come on your podcast. I, heard, I know I, I, I have this amazing idea. Right. You have to take a risk, start somewhere, like you said a little bit ago, and put yourself out there Mm -hmm. because you're quick to tell your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your best friend, your ex-boyfriend, your ex-girlfriend. Why aren't you doing this? You should be doing that. You should be doing that. No, 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 no. Be courageous enough. Stand in front of the mirror and say, I deserve this because I want this and I deserve it. And this is what I'm going to do to get it. Yeah. yeah, that's what I did when I, you know, basically when I started this podcast, I was like, you know, that's something I, it was something that I wanted to do for quite a long time, probably mm-hmm. at that point, probably eight or nine years, I had had the idea of, you know, doing this podcast and I, I, I'm a recovering heroin addict. So okay. Um, okay. Well, there was a bit of a gap between those eight or nine years where it just wasn't going to be possible. But that's part of your story. Oh, for sure. And absolutely, you know, and, that, yeah, I think and, that's, and I'm, and I'm think... a better person for it. I think, you know, honestly, absolutely. Like, because, uh, you know, I, I was forced to do a lot of self, you know, work on myself mm-hmm. and uh, that a lot of people don't do because they don't even know that they really need to do it. You know, there's mm-hmm. a lot of like self reflection and inquiry and, you know, like getting mm-hmm. to the root of why, yep. you know, I gravitated towards that, that lifestyle. And right, right. I, I can uh, uh, basically sum it up by uh, spiritual bankruptcy. Mm-hmm. At the time, yeah. you know, I was spiritually right. bankrupt and uh, right. because of that, you know, and be- because of being so caught up in those, those uh, narratives of society and culture and what yeah. we're supposed to do that, right. you know, basically I, I didn't think it was possible when, you know, if you put the work in, anything is possible. Yeah. And, and for like, you know, in, re- in accordance and I'm proud of you and congratulations. Oh, it's, it's, it's great, it is you know, but <laughs> I but, know you hate that. <laughs> and, <laughs> that's actually what paused me because I hate that saying, but <laughs> it's part of your story. Right. But think about it. If there's listeners out there who are going through it, what you've been, what you went through now, they can say, wow, he went, he had that condition. Right. If he can do this too. 
And that's the problem. The problem today is people think that they have so much time in the world and that, oh, I have to do it by this date. There's no deadlines in dreams. Right. Dreams are embracing the journey and getting to the de de destination of selflessness and paying it forward. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody has so misled of, in I mean, this society now is instant gratification and immediate response. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go to the cliches, a tree doesn't grow overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day. That's true. You and I didn't just get born and now here we are X amount of years later. And I think when we start looking at our lives as chapters, mm -hmm. all right, what did I learn this year? What did I learn this month? What did I learn today mm -hmm. that I can be better for myself tomorrow? And we have to stop saying getting overwhelmed with the huge picture and just taking it step by step. Because truth be told, I said this the other day, I said, you know, I remember when I had this vision years ago, like you with the podcast, mm. but it wasn't ready at that time. Right. I had to go through what I went through to have the stories and experience and knowledge to get where I am. But it's just like, it's, it's just amazing because we think we have so much time and not enough time there is for me. Absolutely. I remember when I was when I was younger, I was like, I can't wait till next year. It's so far away. Oh, my God. Now yeah. years are flowing by like weeks. I'm just like, what just happened to 2021 and 2020? Like right. it, it went so fast for right. me. But because I'm digging my heels in the ground, I'm getting to the point. I'm reaching people all over the world. I'm speaking and I've got these ideas and and you know, everything I'm keeping being productive as opposed to being busy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a huge difference. And I think people really need to be mindful of that. Absolutely. Why is everybody so busy? But all right, well, what, what was your productivity rate? What have you done? If you're so busy that you can't talk to me, you're so busy, you can't see your family. Then what is the product and what is the success and sacrifice that you're doing to get it? Well, you know, I think it all comes down to what you prioritize. I right, think it's, absolutely. you know, what, what you consider the biggest priority, because if, you know, say, you know, you just gave the example of, you know, someone being too busy to talk to you. It's like, well, obviously something is higher on your, your priority list than speaking right. to me. So, you know, yeah. it, it's an analyzation of what your priorities are and you're going to prioritize the things that are the most important to you. Right. And so what I like to do is like, all right, you're too busy to talk to me. I can't wait because I'm going to call you in a week to see what this thing is. Right. Absolutely. I challenge them, you know, and it's crazy because it's just like, you know, you have to prioritize. And, you know, one of the benefits that I've learned was I was able to successfully gain 40, four zero hours per month back, brought back into my life. Wow. Why? Because I am plugged. Yeah. I w and I encourage the audiences. We're having a great time. I encourage you to first take your cell phone and go to your email and type in am.pressplay at gmail and type in the name of this podcast. I don't want to mispronounce it. Can you pronounce it for me? Dharma. 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 Okay. Dharma podcast. And message me for a session because... Here's what I'm going to show you is if you take the amount of time that you're watching the news, mm -hmm. you're watching Netflix, you're watching doc, um, listening to music. Think about how much time you can have more with your friends, more with your family, more with yourself, personal development, personal growth where you're just wasting away because I've done it. I've come home from full-time jobs and working at school, going to school full-time and just opening the door, hitting the couch and just binge watching whatever. Right. And a lot of people say, well, Andrea, I just kind of deep, you know, I just kind of escape. It's, it's, it's not reality. I can get lost in that. But if you're able to do something you love, how much bittersweet can you gain? How much more gifts can you acquire and see the fullest potential 
I mean, think about if you in substituted those Netflix and those TV dramas of violence and, and, and negativity. And think about if you said, hey, you know what? I'm going to invest in watching how to cook. I love cooking. I love doing podcasts. I love doing electron, you know, networking. If you took those elements and substituted for something positive, how much more faster can your dream become a reality? Yeah, Gary V says you work nine to five, you come home, you kiss the dog, and you grind. A lot of people don't want to do that. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's you know that's what I do. I still you know I have a regular job. I right. I'm in, I'm back in school. I, I went back to college. You know after going through my awesome. my addiction problem, um, right. so I'm back back in school. And I get awesome. off, you know, when I, when I'm not in school and I'm not, you know, studying or, or spending time with my family, I'm, you know, doing this or I'm networking or I, you know, I'm yeah. trying, trying to build this, you know, I, I'm, I'm working on this because this is what I enjoy. You know, I don't right. enjoy waking up at six o'clock in the morning and going to a job that, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I, I like, I do like my job right now. I, I actually right. enjoy my job, which is right. Uh, a, quite a change for me because generally like in the past, I, I worked a lot of jobs that I didn't like. And over, right, the, right. over the over the course of that happening, that was one of the things that triggered. Uh, see, I, I was, I, like I said, I was, a uh, you know, as I mentioned, I'm a recovering addict and I, I had right. uh, about two years of clean time. And then I relapsed in January of this year and okay. I can attribute that to uh, many things. And it's, it's literally everything we're talking about right now. The reason I relapsed wow. is because I was working at a job that I did not like. Right. I, I was resentful of the fact that I had to do it. I felt it was beneath me and it wasn't beneath me. I just didn't enjoy it. Right. Um, I was going to school full time. You know, mm -hmm. I was, uh, you know, I was actually working two full time jobs at that time wow. and going to school full time and still trying to do the podcast and still trying to wow. study and still trying to have a, you know, a, a relationship with my, my significant other and, and her, her kids. And, and, yeah. and there was just not enough time. There just wasn't right. enough time for it all. And it got very overwhelming. Right. And uh, it was because I was, I was pulling myself in too many directions and, and I found myself not putting my spirituality first and my recovery mm -hmm. first because I was so overwhelmed with everything else. And I think right. that when we start prioritizing other things over that spiritual side of ourselves, that part of us that, because everybody has what, you know, what I like to refer to as like a God hole, you know, they, mm -hmm. they've got that hole that they need to fill with something. Yes. And in yes. when you're spiritually bankrupt, you're going to fill it with drugs because they make you feel at the time like blissful, blissful, the same feeling you get from having a, you know, a quote unquote spiritual life. Right. And, and right. I had put that by the wayside because I was just so busy. I was prioritizing other things over that. When that right. needs to be the biggest priority, my recovery and my, my spirituality need to be my biggest focus, because if I don't focus on those first and foremost, nothing else is possible. Exactly. Exactly. And that's very powerful for saying, I appreciate you and acknowledge you for that, because a lot of people don't see that. They put the financial component first. They put the... the the you know financial contribution to the family or themselves and it's like if your number one asset is your health is not intact and then your spiritual is not alignment with that right you might as well be a robot or just absorbing everything that comes your way and maybe have the energy to dissect if it's positive or negative right. and then a lot of people self-medicate and it doesn't actually have to be drugs. It could be food. Yeah, it could be and anything, yeah. anything. Yeah. And that, you know, and it's funny because that's what um, Matthew McConaughey says, rule out what you don't want to be because you're carving your own, you know, statue, sculpture, paraphrased, right. obviously. Yeah. And that's what I started doing. I was like, well, okay, I enjoy the social work realm. I enjoy the psychology, but I'm not taking it to the top because that's not what I want to do. Right. And everybody was like, well, you got to go here, 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 and here and go this level. I said, I don't have to do anything. The only thing in this life, as morbid as it sounds, is die. You have no control out of that. Nobody is getting out of here alive, as Mr. Brown has mentioned. Absolutely. 
but you have one life. If you're lucky, you may get two, like my friend did. And it's how you live. Yeah. And you're not, you want a life of love, legacy that you're building, not a life where you're surviving. Right. And a lot of us are just, like you said, a lot of us are already dead inside and just going through the motions. In a fleshy tomb, I am buried above yeah. the ground. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No. And it's so, and that's, that's, that's my why to instill potential and still belief and still faith that as long as you're still here you have work to do right so why and, and, not and do still something got a chance. you love and you still yeah. got a chance too and i think that's yes. something that people tend to overlook and i did for the longest time you know especially even like doing this podcast or anything you know any kind of creative endeavors or anything like that going back to school it's like oh well you know i just turned 40 this year it's like oh well you know i'm oh. already 40 years old and like i've been you know I've waited too long it's like no you just didn't do it as soon as you could have but, and those are the false but, limited but beliefs that are given right yeah. you're doing it that's do it. that's you know? awesome like it doesn't doesn't matter Nike. how old it doesn't matter <laughs> just how old do it you know yeah just right. do it yeah, you could have. I could have started it eight years ago, nine years ago when I first had the idea. But you know, like we said, right. I, I just wasn't ready at that time, and, yeah. and and now I'm doing it. You know, I could have put it off for another eight or nine years, but it really takes just saying "fuck it" and just do yeah. it. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I yeah, mean, there, you know, you know it's, there's risk it, involved. Of course, there's going to be risk sure. involved, but there's sure. risk in anything. Like I said, you know, exactly. You're you, risk you're walking risk outside your front door, going across the street, getting hit by something, God forbid, you know, you you're, know? you're risking your health, you know, whether it be physical or mental health every day by yeah. doing shit that you hate. Exactly. So exactly. do some shit. And I don't love. think people see that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you see it <laughs> and I'm glad you're yes. helping other people to see it. Thank you. Because I think that's like so important, you know, to, it is. to take what you've learned and to to try to give that back because that's really what life is about, is about yeah. service to others. You know, I think without that, I think, you know, that that's another thing that could lead to that spiritual bankruptcy. You know, if you're just yeah. if you're if you're so wrapped up in yourself that you're only doing for yourself, then right. I think that's a recipe for disaster. Right. Right. And and you know, it's you know, what we experience are so valuable on how we experience, how we overcome, how overcome it. It's going to help us reach back to that individual that's in the darkness right now. Right. Hey, I've been there. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather learn from somebody who's been through it than a textbook, than a video, than a, than a you know, than that. Because that's relatable. That's authentic. That's yeah. that's you know resonates with people. You know. Hundred percent. Yeah. Well, what are your plans for the future? So I plan on now uh, developing uh, kind of educational for those underdeveloped countries. I've started already in Africa, awesome. and I'm. Oh, really? That's, that's working. Fantastic. Yes, I've worked with, I'm working in Africa currently. I have upcoming in the fall, the Middle East and South America is the next areas that I'm aiming towards. And my goal is hopefully to go to these places in person and, you know, go where I came from and see what the life is there and see, just kind of walk, walk where I was. You know, I mean, I saw footage the other day and it was just like, I don't even know how I'm here. <laughs> it was bad, you know, and, and it's probably, as not a, as a, probably not as bad as it used to be when you were. There. No, well, I'm saying that's what I meant yeah, when I was there. When you were there. Yeah. 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 And and it's like, you know, and it's just bittersweet how things work out, you know, and that's why I remember where I came from. And I think that's what our leaders are struggling with whether it's the pressure, their own, their own pressure. Remember where you came from, like I said in the beginning of this segment. Mm -hmm. What got you there? Right. What got you here? And remember the, the journey of it. You know, remember the ups and downs, when you're crying in the corner, when you're scrounging for the last penny to make ends meet, when you're dug down and people don't believe in you, you keep going. 
Yeah. That's part of the story. I mean, how, you know, I, I love documentaries when people are fully disclosed because it's like it's not this cookie cutter, you know, beautiful picture and portrait right. that's given. I mean, how many times do you look at an art piece, but you look at how it was made and you're like, oh, that doesn't look good. And then you see the final masterpiece. It's like, right. wow, now it's come all together, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that authenticity is the most important thing. And that's what I try to do with, with this show is like, just be completely yeah. authentic the entire time. And I, I, I <laughs> you're going to fail being somebody else every time. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'll open, you know, I'll open up about stuff that most people wouldn't dare talk about, you know, and I, I, right. I think that it's important to do that, not only for me yeah. to, to be vulnerable like that and to put myself out there in that aspect, but to show other people yes. that it's possible. Yeah, and vul you know, Mr. Brown says vulnerability is not a sign of weakness; it's a sign of awareness. And when we're able to say, "Hey, you know what? I messed up. It's been bad. I made poor decisions," <laughs> but I but look at the mindset I was in at that right. time. Look at the choices I had available. Look at the cards I was dealt at that moment. Right. At I didn't time. think about the future at that time. That was the. That's what I thought that was, was like, what has to be done. Yeah, that was at that at that time. That was the pinnacle of your decision making because of right? because of your causes and conditions that had put you where you were at the time. Right, and that's why I when I, you know people are like Andre, I want to know this. I'm like, look, I'm not going to give you an immediate answer. Yeah, it's not how I work. I'm going to sleep on it. If I have to talk to my family about it, or if I really have to kind of meditate on it, I will. Right. Because I don't act on impulse and I don't do anything half effortlessly. Right. I go all in or I'm not in. And all due respect, if I'm not in, that says something to you that I want to give you my 100%, my best version and self of me. Because yeah. if I'm going to go half effort, then I'm not respecting you. I'm not respecting your mission, your message, your calling or whatever you are confiding or, you know, collaborating because that's not fair to you. Yeah. It's not about me. Mm -hmm. I, I could care less, you know, I could care less if I make a mistake. That's not the point. The point is if I'm asked to do something, I'm making a full fledged informed decision and I'm going to allow myself time to make that decision. Absolutely. Yeah. I, think, know, I think I think that's what a lot I think of people that's so important, man. I think that's so fucking important to just take yeah. that time to really because people, yeah, people just jump, you know, and yeah. then, without really. And getting, then they complain about it afterwards. I, oh man, I did, I was acting on pimples. Well, you, it, and you know, I notice you know? it the most with people's speech. You know, I, people don't take the time to actually think about what they're going to say, and you can tell when they're doing that because the moment you stop talking is when they start, and there's no pause. You know, and, and I, I, I don't know if any, any of my listeners, listeners have noticed that I generally try to think about what I'm going to say. But generally, I don't do it all the time, but 90% of the time I try to give pause and actually consider the question or the statement before responding to it. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of people don't do that. I think, I think if anything should, <laughs> I think the, the most important thing that should be taught, whatever method of teaching, effective listening and effective communicating. Think, Justin, how many relationships, friendships, business partnerships, world leaders, if they just took those three seconds and listen, hold hard, like not to speak, but to understand what somebody's saying. Absolutely. I, I think that yeah. probably the most important thing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, Andrea, thank you so much. It's been it an absolute pleasure. How can, honor. how can uh, people get in touch with you? Absolutely. So I am on all social media handles, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. And uh, you can find me on YouTube, Andrea Mason, your personal accountability coach. Okay. And I've just successfully surpassed 300 videos on there of a whole myriad of content. And I have playlists for men, women, moms, teachers, awesome. coaches, what have you. Awesome. And I do, again, friendly encourage you to reach out to me, am.pressplay at gmail get your complimentary session with me that I usually charge 
so I can connect with you and allow you in this game of life to press play, plan life according to you. Awesome. Excellent. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. And, yes, uh, you too. Enjoy the holiday weekend. Make the best of it what you can. Every day is a holiday. It's just a matter of your perspective. 100%. Talk to you later. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. Be well. Thanks again to Andrea for being on the show. If you'd like to get in touch with her, she can be found at www.andreamasons.com. That's Masons with an S. She can also be found on YouTube, and I will be sure to provide links for that in the liner notes of the episode. And she can also be found on Facebook at andrea.mason.7982. This has been the Dharma Junkie Podcast, and as always, I have been Justin Otto. Namaste. Chaos is beautiful.